Carefully open the trainer frame and extend the legs. Place the trainer on the floor and use the rear feet of the trainer to level the unit. Before installing your bike on the trainer, you want to inflate the rear tire to the highest recommended PSI of the tire or rim, whichever is lower. Every tire and some rims have a different PSI range, so you'll want to check with what's printed on them to make sure you're in that range. Remove the quick release skewer from your bike. Replace it with the provided steel trainer skewer. Pro tip, if your bike has a through axle, you'll need one of our through axle adapters for safely mounting your bike on the trainer frame. You can find these at saris.com. Line up your bike so that the resistance unit is behind the rear wheel. Insert the ends of the QR skewer or through axle adapter. Line up the slider tube on the trainer and push the lollipop lever down until it locks in place. Pro tip, if your bike doesn't fit between the slider tube and the assembly on the non-drive side of the trainer, you can adjust the non-drive side tube into another of the three preset positions. Grab the bike seat and shake it to make sure that the bike is fully seated and tight in the trainer frame. To engage the resistance unit, turn the black knob until you see the side walls of the tire start to depress. From there, turn it another two and a half rotations to ensure proper engagement. To engage the resistance unit, turn the yellow clutch knob until you hear it click. Here's how you make your trainer app compatible. You can connect any non-smart trainer to a variety of trainer apps by simply adding a speed sensor to the rear wheel of your bike. The sensor will connect to popular apps such as Ruby, Trainer Road, and Zwift. The apps then use your wheel speed data to calculate your power, game speed, and distance.